Everybody I've talked to about this gig looks puzzled. I saw looked at the, at the ad for the gig and I looked puzzled. What is this gig about? I think that says more about your friends than this gig. No, I don't think so. I don't right. think so. Well, it's a it's a it's a I mean it's a wonderful combination. I just it's an unusual combination. Um, I think it's a, I think the idea is to play a lot of good music. You know, it's also very much about the sort of one and a half steps of separation that you see mm -hmm. sometimes in a place like Portland, where somebody may have played with somebody else, or played with somebody else, and it's not so much a question about genre. It's a question about people that find chemistry and are able to get along. And you know, this is also one of those cities where if someone's coming here, they go, "Oh, by the way, if you're going to Portland, you should call so and so because they might be able to help you out." And you end up meeting this fantastic tapestry of individuals who have, they, you know, they might be in, you know, a so-called rock or an ethnic music setting, but there's no reason why people can't just play music together. I think all good music is unclassifiable. I think, you know, any great music sets its own genre context. Okay. Yes. Well, I was gonna t to get back to a point we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, musicians, we don't. I, I think we don't think. We don't think vertically. We don't think about this fits into this box. This fits into this genre. This fits into this record band. Every musician I know listens to everything on earth. You know, they listen to. They listen to everything in the area that they play. They listen to their own instrument. They listen to. If you're a, if you're a humble, hungry curious artist, your ears and your heart are open to everything that comes across you. So, I mean, I spend a lot of my time listening to birds, you know. I spend a lot of my time listening to music that has no relationship to what I play. Um, I did a gig a couple months ago with two accordion players and a, you know, a, folk, a banjo player from Canada. Um, it doesn't fit into the, you know, the so-called avant-garde jazz category, but it's because we think in this horizontal way as opposed to having to make sense of it so you can sell it to a certain niche market. Yeah. I know. It's, it's uh, uh, to paraphrase the Art Ensemble of Chicago, great music ancient to the future. And that idea really caught on then and it just, it just, it still does. Oh, absolutely. It just is, it's just, I mean, lovely to see all these different kinds of musicians in the same, on the same gig. What, give, give me a rundown of what, 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 what who are you going to have? Uh, the gig is is Doug Wieselman, or as you said, Douglas Wieselman. Douglas Wieselman. Um, Doug is a fantastic uh, clarinet player and reeds player, and, and a really multi instrumentalist. And um, Portland audiences would have seen him most recently, probably with Anthony and the Johnsons. Uh, they've played at the TBA festival the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. uh, he's. You know, he's sort of a first call guy with a lot of the, you know, the, kind of the downtown folks in, in New York. And I heard him with Lou Reed and Yoko Ono. Um, the record that he has out that he's on tour for is called From Water. And it's inspired by all these bodies of water that he has visited. And it's stunning. It's actually notated from what he hears in water. In the same way that someone like Olivier Messiaen might notate the word songs the bird, he hears. Yeah. But it's, and it really is a beyond category record. You couldn't say, because he's playing clarinet, you couldn't go, oh, it's, it is jazz or it is classical. It's really just, it's a, it is a, it is a, it is a, it's a human record. It's deeply human. It's rooted in place. It's rooted in, you know, his relation, a really profound relationship with, with, with place and space. And I'm really, really anxious to hear what he does with it live. A very sensitive, beautiful musician. I don't know him personally. I mean, you, you work with him. Will you be playing with him? No, I, I'm not playing. Oh, okay. But what's your, what's, I mean, can you, can you talk about Doug and I mean, as, a, as, a, as a generous musician, can, having collaborated with him? Uh, I asked him to play in my band. I, I had this one part where I wanted an Ethiopian-style bass clarinet solo, and he said, oh, oh, I've been working on that, <laughs> and he just nailed it, um, and I said, I, I, I heard this live Curtis Mayfield 
record and the guitar was so wonderful and it was doing something like this and, and I gave him the changes and kind of described what I wanted and he just nailed the hell out of it. He's, just, he's, um, he's a genius, he's wonderful to work with. Um, and, uh, open hearts and open minds. I mean, that's I think that's what musicians share. Where does Michael Hurley fit in? Doug, <laughs> Everywhere. Doug Weaselman <laughs> loves Michael Hurley. Uh -huh. Michael Hurley's an incredible composer. Michael Hurley's an incredible. There's nobody that plays like Michael. Nobody writes like Michael. And um, he's a he's a total treasure. Like oh, what you go through that thing so did y'all hear his last record? Hurley's... Mm -hmm. So he'll be playing with Doug? He's playing a solo. Solo, okay. So Doug is playing a set, Hurley's yeah. playing a set, and then Battle Hymns and Gardens are playing a set. And so we'll probably play, you know... Heads will be spinning. I don't think so. I think, I I hope think so. In, the, in, the con in the context of the music, it just it all makes perfect sense. That's not a bad thing. Uh, there's, um, I mean, you know, the the term jazz is completely ridiculous. The term folk is completely ridiculous. And then, then we have no idea what to say any about Doug's stuff. I, I don't know. It's ritualistic. It's shamanistic. What do you say? It's just good. It's all good. I think all three of us are very. We're playing music that is just. It's what's it's kind of what's happening now, and it's uh -huh. it is beyond category. I mean, I know that you know we get lumped into a jazz bag, but you know you won't see Badlands and Gardens playing at you know Jimmy Max very often, or in a, in a straight jazz club because the influences are coming from all over the place, and people don't quite know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Who is in the band these days? Uh, same folks who have always been in it: um, myself and John Shaw on bass. Reed Wellsmith on alto, Joe Cunningham on the tenor. Um, original music, mm -hmm. with the exception of a little bit of some Armenian folk music and a tune from maybe Scott Amendola here, mm -hmm. or a Paul Motion-ish thing there. Mm -hmm. or, uh, but it's all, it's all original. Well, it sounds delightful the whole is it, night. Is it making more sense? Yes and no. It, it doesn't have to make sense. You know, I subscribe to a thing of we all have this drawer in our house. That <laughs> junk drawer, it's filled full of pieces of string and old batteries and just stuff. And if you if you open it up and look at it, it doesn't make sense. Dump it out on the kitchen table and look at it long enough and a pattern begins to emerge. That's the kind of evening I hope it is.